Welcome to Whiskey's Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and today's journey, we're gonna head out of the United States because we have finished my rye series, and we're gonna head over to Ireland. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at the Middleton Distillery, and within that distillery, we're gonna be looking at the Redbreast 12. This is their standard release, not the cask strength. And just like always, let's get this thing nose poured. Let's taste it. Let's talk about it. Give it a score. And then there are no cocktails just yet. I'm still toying around with the idea of doing some Irish cocktails. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you guys would like to see. And quickly, before I get into this, do me a favor, like, subscribe, share, do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. Turn on that bell notification because I go live with videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right, with that business out of the way, let's get this thing on the nose. Anytime I am nosing or smelling a whiskey, the first thing I'd like to do is try to compartmentalize the biggest flavors. Am I getting something that's sweet? Am I getting something that is spicy? Am I getting smoke? Am I getting floral? Am I getting herbal? So those are kind of like the big categories that I'm trying to search for just to get my brain ready. And the first thing that I'm getting here is sweetness. Behind the sweetness, I do get a little bit of spice. Now, as I'm trying to define a little bit more what that sweetness is and what that spice is, I start to think of the different things that are sweet. Is it candy? Is it sugar? Is it fruit? Is it a sweeter type of spice, something like a cinnamon or a nutmeg? And the first thing that comes to mind when I think about sweetness is this has a sugary fruit sweetness. Knowing that this is matured in ex-bourbon and sherry casks, I'm also starting to think that I get vanilla along with those sherry dark fruits, raisins, plums, and figs. Let's get back into it. And sure enough, the vanilla's in there, a little bit of a darker sherry fruits. And I wouldn't say that these are dark raisins, but I would say more on the golden raisins than dark. I'm not necessarily getting dates and figs, but definitely a lighter type of raisin. And I did mention that there is a spice in here, but it's not a peppery spice. I would go towards a sweeter type of spice, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, maybe all spice. Definitely not on the peppery side. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate. Immediately on the palate, it arrives sweet. And that sweetness, again, is the exact same thing that I'm getting on the nose. I get those sherry fruits, followed by a little bit of honey, vanilla. I would throw in some orchard fruit there, but orchard fruit is just all encompassing with pears and apples and citrus. I would say this is more appley than anything else. And as this is on the palate and unfolding, let me give you the stats. This is a 12 year age stated single pot still Irish whiskey, 40% ABV, triple distilled. It's matured in Oloroso sherry casks and ex bourbon. It does have added color along with chill filtration. This is a 750 milliliter bottle. And at the time that I actually purchased this bottle, I paid $49.99. And currently right now with the inflated prices, this is going for $54. And if you guys are new here, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Your market might be a little bit different, but with me, the prices for Irish whiskeys have exploded, even more so than bourbons and scotches. Let's go ahead and get a, another sip in and let's talk a little bit about the finish and see if I can pull anything else out of this. All right, so one of the notes that people always talk about with single pot still Irish whiskeys is that buttery cookie or the shortbread biscuit. Me personally, I have a hard time finding that. I'm not necessarily sure exactly what that tastes like. I don't think I've ever actually had an Irish shortbread cookie or the Irish shortbread biscuit. But what I do have and what I've had before in the past is those vanilla wafers. And I would say that that is a note that I do pick up. And for me, that vanilla wafer comes across as a little bit buttery, a little bit sweet. And that's gonna be something that I get in this instead of that Irish shortbread biscuit. As I'm sitting here talking, that whole experience is pretty quick. I would not say that this is a medium to long finish. It's pretty short. There are absolutely no sharp edges to this whatsoever. As soon as you get it on the palate, it just flows across the tongue. It develops into that fruity sweetness. You get a slight amount of sweet spice and it hits the back of the palate. It turns into a little bit of barrel tannin. The Oloroso sherry cask is in there as well. Those red fruits or those darker fruits start to escalate a little bit and it doesn't last long before you wanna get into another sip. So let's get into another sip, talk a little bit about red breast, and then we'll move on to the score. As I was taking that sip, again, I was breathing in and you get a little bit of a different note. And that time I get more of a vanilla note than I do the fruity sweetness. 
All right, so what do we know about Redbreast 12? Well, this is distilled in Middleton, and it was reintroduced to the market in December of 1991. This was actually absent from the market 10 years prior to 1991, after Gilby's ended up stopped producing it. And the two things I wanna get across in this video are the two terms, the single pot still Irish and the triple distilled. So what is single pot still whiskey? Well, first of all, this is typically done in pot stills and the mash bill that they're going to be using is going to be a combination of malted barley and unmalted barley. And it's rumored that the malt tax of the 18th century caused the Irish distillers to start using unmalted barley so they weren't taxed as heavily on their malt that they were using in their whiskeys at the time. And that's pretty much where single pot still whiskeys ended up coming from. And the second term we have to talk about is triple distilled. And as the name suggests, they're gonna be running through the distillation process three times. Pot still whiskeys are batch produced in pot stills. And when they do the triple distillation, they're either using two or three individual pot stills to run this spirit through. And each time that you go through the distillation process, the alcohol becomes more concentrated. And because of this distillation process, it's going to leave the heavier compounds behind. And the end result is going to be a lighter, fruitier spirit. And I think because of the batching process of pot stills and going through the distillation process three times is going to cause the price of the whiskey and how they produce it to go up, which for the consumer with everything that's going on right now, I think we're also paying for that as well. I'm not an economist, but I think that's kind of what's going on. And because of the amount of red breast that is being sold, I think the consumers are liking the triple distillation process as well. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of Irish whiskey. And if you're familiar with any of the red breast products, let me know what you guys think of them as well. Now let's move on to the last sip and give this thing a score. Apple, honey, vanilla, the pot still spices there, which comes across as a little bit sweet. The sherry fruitness is there along with that buttery cookie. Nothing wrong here in the glass. And if you guys have been here for a while, you know my scoring system is out of five stars. I think the Red Breast 12 is a really good example of what single pot still whiskeys are all about. I am not gonna give this a three stars because that would just say that it's average. I do believe that this is above average to some of the other pot stills that I've had. So because of that, I'm gonna end up giving this 3.5 stars. And I arrive at the 3.5 mark because I know what Red Breast has in its lineup. They have a cast strength, which I believe is the exact same thing here, but just at cask strength. They have an age stated 15, 21, and 27 in their core lineup. They also have their special releases, the PX and the Lestau, and also the North America release of the Kentucky Oak. All of those are going to be reviewed during this series. And because I know what's coming up, this is going to get a rating of 3.5 stars. I think it is a little bit thin at 40%. I think they can do better, and I know they do better. Their other offerings are up around 46%. Because this is chill filtered and added color, I'm going to dock it a little bit. I was actually thinking to go 3.75, but I do think 3.5 is a good rating for this. I do have some that are going to be scoring less. And I certainly have more that are going to be scoring higher. So I guess with all that being said, that's where I'm going to leave it today. Enjoy your journey, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.